Today I'm going to start working on a new project for the truck. Uh, I want to put in a raised bed floor and I'm going to build some uh, brackets or braces at the corners. I wanted to kind of do this as a full bolt in. A lot of people will, or I've seen people run um, maybe a piece of angle iron along the edge of the bed. And I'm going to raise this up about eight inches. So they would either run a piece of angle iron along the edge of the bed and bolt that or weld that in. And then put your cross bracing for your wood floor slats to run on. But I would rather it be somewhat bolted. Now these, these brackets that I'm going to build are, I'm going to weld them together. But then they'll bolt to the bed floor. And then I will run my bracing on top of that. So... This would be for the rear. This would be the very back, and then this would be where it comes up over the wheel well. So the wheel well will be here. The wheel well will come up here like so. Okay, and then so this will extend over close to the wheel well. So I'll be able to put two braces running from left to right or side to side here. And then this will be the front. This will be the very front near the cab. And then this will be the wheel well part again. And I'll probably run three braces on this one because it's about 30 inches long. And so I can space those out about every 10 inches or so. Um, maybe I'll space some more. I, I don't know yet. But these will be bolt in. These are welded together, but these will bolt into the bed. So if for any reason I want to remove it, I can. Um, probably run two bolts through the floor and then at the rear where that rear stake pocket is it comes all the way down to the floor I'll run one bolt over that'll kind of stabilize it left to right right so that's what I'm gonna work on today is is building these two get those built or sorry four two front two back I've got some of my cut links that I need to make so I'm gonna get those cut I'm gonna weld all of this up in one by one uh, tubing just one inch tubing, square tubing. So I'll weld all those up in that. And then I'll use a one by two um, tubing, rectangular tubing for the cross braces that the wood slats will fit on. So those braces that I was just showing you will mount, the back one will mount here on this rib, It'll be on this raised rib and then kind of come up here at an angle. And then the back one similar on this raised rib start up close but not touching the front header panel back here and then angle up as well so that I'll be able to run a strip here probably three strips and then here at least two strips that'll support the bed floor I'm going to double check my measurements for my height I need eight inches total so I'm going to do an inch at the bottom an inch at the top like I showed you in the picture so each one of the legs need to be six inches long. So just set up a little quick stop on here that's six inches from the blade so that I can just make those repeated cuts. I need eight of them and I just want them all the same height. The length, if I were off, you know, an eighth or a sixteenth or something wouldn't be as big a deal, but the height has to all be the same. This is the one inch square tubing that I have pretty heavy um, but trim this down a little bit so it's easier to work in there
caulking up each one of these. Make sure they're 90 degree. And then I'm gonna weld the outside edges. Um, clamp, keep them clamped to the table so they don't twist. I'll weld the other side, I'll flip it over and do the same. Get started here. fit that just to make sure like I, I might have to chop a little bit of an angle here on the raised bed floor. Um, I have welded up all the brackets, so I spent some time yesterday welding those up. So this is where they're gonna sit. I'm gonna have a bracket here that is gonna extend out, and then I'll put cross braces from one side to the other. So I'll have two back here and probably three up here. It'll get two mounts, two bolts to the floor, and then one bolt here. I ordered a rivet nut uh, gun so that I can put uh, those nut certs into the metal and I'll need that for the top as well to be able to screw the um, brackets that hold the wood down. So hopefully that'll come in maybe tomorrow. I'll show you a little closer look at this. So those risers are 8 inches. That gives me clearance for the tanks or the tank up front plus the C-notch. A little bit of a shadow on it, but you get the idea. Two bolts through the floor. I'm also going to run a piece of wood here all the way over to the other side, and that'll just block off this back compartment. I could throw, you know, a toolbox or something in there. It won't be, like I said, it won't be very tall, eight inches high. So this is the only welding I'm going to do are these brackets. Everything else is going to bolt in. Got quite a few holes to drill. I started drilling pilot holes to bolt down to the floor. Then one here that'll stabilize it. Run the wood across, have a couple bolts there to run into the wood, just to close off this back area. So today I'm going to keep drilling holes, measure for my cross braces. And I'll get these bolted in and I need to go pick up the cross braces and the wood. So I also finish welded inside here too. To keep that rigidity got pilot holes drilled with eighth inch drill bit to start um, I think through the floor I'm gonna run like a 3 8 bolt washer on the bottom nice big washer just to spread out that load um, and then I will probably run maybe a quarter 20 through here and then quarter 20s to hold that piece of wood on the back 
And I thought about making that out of metal, but I mean, it's gonna have a wood bed floor, right? So I'll just use a piece of wood here and I can use a sealer on it. Like I'm gonna do the wood floor. The wood floor sealer, I'm gonna do top and bottom too. A lot of, that's what a lot of guys do, try to get that sealed underneath. I probably won't stain the underside. Um, I think I've got some dark walnut stain that I wanna use. I'd like a pretty dark wood. And then the metal strips that hold the wood in will just be black. And I've ordered some button head cap screws or cap bolts, quarter 20s. That's what's gonna hold those, um, those strips between the wood. That's what'll hold it down. And then that way, if I need to access the air ride or get underneath that wood floor for some reason, even if I'm not at home, I can just pull two or three of those strips out from the top because I will use those rivet um, nut certs, certs, inserts that go into here or into the strips. And then I'll just be able to pull those out take as many planks of wood out of my way as I need to, to, to get to it and service it or work on it. So that's where I'm at. Um, now the cross bracing, I was going to add an angle here to beef this up, but I'm not going to put the cross brace out here at the very end. I'm probably going to put it, set it back about two or three inches. So it'll be plenty sturdy. This is a, a fairly thick walled one inch tube. So with it setting here, just a couple inches off of that, it's going to be plenty sturdy to support it. So we're going to mark where I drill the holes on the front pieces. And I'm drilling all the brackets first, and then I'll come back and mark the floor in case I'm off just a touch. braces under the bed if you have it set up like mine. And like the other two, I think I'm also going to put a piece of wood across here too. That'll just help close in that area where the compressor and tank and the air manifold is and just keep some of that road grime. You know, if you have to drive in the rain, all that rain that's swishing around underneath the truck, just keep some of that down. So I'll put that across there too. That'll also help with that back and forth side to side rigidity. Not only will you have the braces on top, but you'll also have this. So that'll keep any of that movement down as well. So I'm going to work on getting these holes drilled. touch over 72 so I think if I do 71 and a half that'll give me about a quarter inch space on either side so I can just have them all cut to the same and then 
these pieces front to back. I tailgate's a little bowed, so I need to measure a couple spots here. 78 and three quarter. I'm gonna go 79. I can trim them off if I need to. And then I need to figure out how many pieces of wood I need here. I think I'm gonna use like a one by 10 width, 72 inches across. So divide by 10, but I, I can have about three quarters to an inch of space in between there. And I'll probably start with a full piece of wood down the middle and then work off either side there. All right, I went up and picked up my metal. Well, it's hard to see over there, but I'm gonna get these holes marked and drilled for the bed. I put some yellow tape down on the floor so it was easier to see. came in today they're a zinc coated so they should be good in the weather I'm just waiting on my rivet gun I'm back from the run to the hardware store I went ahead and picked up the wood too for the bed so I should have everything I need and I bought one by tens for the main part and then it's a little more than 10 inch here on the wheel well. So I bought a one by 12 to go front and back. And I think with my strip, I should be able to space that out and make that work. I'm gonna play with it a little bit. If for some reason I need to go back and switch out the one by 10 to one by 12, but I think, A, it was cheaper than going all one by 12s. Saved about, I don't know, 15 or 20 bucks. The price of lumber right now, so. But if I did all 1x12s, I would have like a <clears throat> 6 or 7 inch cut on the end. Um, so it would be wasting a lot too if I did that. Otherwise, I do the 1x10s. They're going to come just to the inside edge of this. And then that one 1x12 in each corner, which I think will look just fine. In front of behind those wheels. this morning laying out these cross members and marking them where I want to drill holes and I'm going to use some quarter 20 bolts to bolt it to those risers so I'm going to drill those out when I I'm going to drill all the way through for the bolt but then I'm going to open this up with a step bit so that head can countersink down into the 
the tubing itself and that way I won't have anything sticking up above here for the wood floor to to sit uneven on so I've marked them starting up there is one two three and four and then I know which way they're facing so they'll all go back in the right way then I can lay the wood out and mark all the holes in between so just time for some drilling right now of that top hole there to the bottom one I'm gonna hit that with the grinder real quick so I finished drilling up those holes on these cross members now I'm gonna measure off this bulkhead and preset this first one get it drilled and bolted down and then measure back each one drill and bolt it down and so on so that they're nice and parallel with each other as they go back. It'll make it easier for my straps that are holding the wood down. I can mark one of the straps. I can just stack them and drill through all of them or at least drill one and then use it for a, uh, for a guide for the rest. I'll set that at three inches off of the bulkhead there. That tech tip if you're measuring up against something you know how the tape will roll take you a little card like a little uh, credit card you lay it in there and then clip it to the tape So that card is laying up against your final final location. And we pull that out. Your tape will flatten out on the card where it was. So it's basically oh, five sixteenths, seventy-two and five sixteenths. It's just past. A quarter so that would be 36 and a fat eighth is center that's for the back or the front sorry so. So 36 would be 72, and I said a fat eighth.
This is premium grade pine. Which is uh, three quarter inch thick. could order like an oak or an ash or something like that that's maybe a little more stable in a hardwood but most of us we're not going to haul much in here so this is what I'm trying to decide on it's coming right up against this wheel well here you know when I'm looking at photos <clears throat> of a lot of trucks this piece of wood has a notch out of it you know, a good two or three inches. So what that's gonna do is this piece here will come up and start to wrap around right here and get kind of thin. So that's what worries me. But I could, I guess, make that strip So I went ahead and drilled one of the slats that holds down the wood. So I drilled one of those and got it marked nicely. And then all I'm doing now is I've clamped all of them together. There's six pieces, so I clamped them all together. And I can drill through using my top one as my template. That way all the holes are exactly the same. It'll look nice and uniform on top of here. Um, I've made these holes a little bit bigger. So I've got a little wiggle room with this when I screw it down. Um, I've got those cap, cap screws. They're like a button head cap screw and then a washer and it's all black. And then these will be painted black too. And then I need to cut off about an inch or so on the end. So this top one is cut to length and drilled. center of this wouldn't matter so much because you can't see it but the center of this when you stand back and look at the bed you're going to see if it's off a little bit that's why I'm drilling into these this way here 
I, I've already marked all of the spaces between the boards. So now I'm just coming back and uh, marking all the bolt holes here. Double checking that this looks nice and perpendicular to the cross beams. Also leaving about a sixteenth of an inch off of this header panel. come back I think what I'm gonna drill it with is a 2364 that should be the right size for those those nut inserts rivet inserts 